Greetings, members, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you would like to learn how to become a member or would like to buy me a coffee as a special thank you, those links can be found down below. If you are new here and enjoy what you are hearing, or you have been here and not done so already, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Not only does it help the channel out, but it also reminds you of every time I upload a video. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for this dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Crazy Neighbors from Hell. Right after this intro in ad will play, I'll read the first story in ad will play, and after that there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer. Heavy adult language will be used throughout this video. Listening discretion is advised. I moved into this apartment complex several months back. Unfortunately, it's in a rough neighborhood, but it's all I can afford coming out of a divorce. Moving isn't an option at the moment. The music I'm dealing with isn't even coming from my building. At minimum, four times a week, there are about six men who get together in the parking lot with several cases of beer and proceed to keep everyone up. They open the doors of their cars and start blasting Spanish music as loud as humanly possible. I don't even know how they can hear each other speak. I mean, I literally cannot hear my own TV and it's to the point that it rattles my windows at times. The worst part is this goes on until 1 in the morning, or even later sometimes, including on weeknights. I'm losing sleep and sanity over this. And also, I hate that they trash the parking lot and puke and pee in the bushes because I have a direct line of sight, unfortunately. I've called the property manager several times, but this usually happens after office hours. I've called the police probably a dozen times, and I think they've showed maybe twice. I'm a woman living alone, so I'm not really comfortable approaching a group of drunk men if I don't have to. But I've also asked them directly to turn it down. But they shake their heads and say they don't speak English. But when I go back inside, I see them laughing and waving at my window. Please, for the love of God, if any of you have any advice, I would appreciate it. I have lived in the same apartment for six years and have had numerous downstairs neighbors. About a year or two ago, a new family moved in. They live in a two-bedroom apartment that's not very spacious with about seven people living there four kids and three adults i think recently they even got a big dog which i suspect is not being treated correctly we'll get to that later on when they first moved in there they were very quiet and seemingly normal besides the one time the man's baby mama showed up and yelled at him and the fact every time i see the woman she's pregnant as time went by, things started getting bad as the man of the house is unemployed and would smoke weed on the outside deck all day every day, and the smell would seep into my apartment. Then they kept popping out children left and right, which is a problem because from what I can tell, they are not very good parents. They scream at their kids all night long, telling them to shut the fuck up and get out of my fucking face. Mind you, these are toddlers. I put a question mark next to the amount of children living down there because I'm honestly not sure since not only is the woman constantly knocked up, but both parents have multiple children with other people and those kids are rarely outside, constantly cooped up in the small apartment. In the past couple of months, the situation with them has gotten even worse. They got a big dog, and I always hear him crying and barking. They chain him to a tree outside, and the poor dog is constantly whining. 
The one time I saw the kids interact with the dog, they were tackling him, and the dog was clearly very uncomfortable and quite upset. A family friend pet the dog and said he smelt really bad. I feel so incredibly bad for the dog and kids, but what can I do about it? Another recent issue is the constant mess they are making. There are toys all over the ground outside, and they have begun leaving bags of trash outside their door filled with used diapers, and I'm scared it's starting to attract bugs. When you walk past their car, it's filled with nasty shit, including diapers, and if their apartment door is ever open, you can see it's filled with triple the amount of shit on the inside. I'm also pretty sure the man in the house is selling drugs because I have seen very strange individuals walk up to the door to meet the guy and they walk around to the back of the apartment block together in what looks like an exchange. I'm at a loss. I hate them so much. Any advice for what I can do to stop this mess and help the kids and dogs would be appreciated. I'm sorry, listeners, you all know I try to keep my personal opinions out of these stories, but in this situation, I would have immediately called CPS and animal control. Those poor babies and those fur babies. What disgusting human beings. Anyway, back to our stories. Hello, everyone. I wanted to share my experience with you all. To give some context, I rent a basement apartment in a home. The upstairs neighbors consist of a single mother with two school-aged children and a toddler. Apparently, I've heard from the landlord that they have been living in the unit and haven't paid any of the utilities, nor rent, for over a year. They were asked to at least contribute for gas, power, water, etc. However, they haven't paid. The family stomps around kids seem to run the home, screaming and running. I'll admit, it gets annoying when it is time for me to sleep, as I'm a working person and the mother does not work. The woman upstairs sings loudly, daily, and deliberately sings in the corner of the home where her echoes can be heard. At this point, I just use my vacuum and start cleaning, or I dry my hair with a blow dryer. The singing, or cat and heat sounds, Makes me feel crazy, honestly. I think that they are being obnoxious because they want me to move out so they can take my apartment and continue living for free. They have also begun messing with the lights, and at times, my lights are dimmer since it is a shared house. Also, the woman uses a ton of water, like a ridiculous amount, and I can even hear it when she slams the faucet down. I've seen two different men frequent the home. I'm guessing she is a sex worker or something. I mind my business and I tolerate it because it is not easy to move due to finances. Thankfully, in my room, I cannot hear them as much. In New York State, I could report them to the city via a website. I may have to do so. Also, the landlord is asking for more rent. This came as a surprise. Am I paying for the family too since they aren't paying? Like picking up their slack? Any advice on the matter in terms of keeping my sanity? Has anyone also experienced something similar? Thank you for listening and any advice would be of great help. I'm living in a luxury apartment in a big city, and rent is upward of $3,000 a month. The upstairs neighbor has a dog that they do not enrich in any way at all, and so its primary form of entertainment is to bark all fucking day. It goes off like a machine gun and shakes the floor at times. People cannot walk past their front door without the dog lighting up at the passerby. So, when the dog is embarking out of pure boredom, it is barking in an alerting way. I work from home, and the barking is constantly getting in the background of all of my virtual meetings. 
My own dog can't localize the sound of the barking and has panic attacks whenever the barking starts and stays panicked most of the day as usually no more than 30 minutes go by between bouts of barking, which is not enough time for my dog to calm down. I have to take my dog out of the apartment for hours at a time. And because this isn't always feasible, I've had to put him on Trazodone to try and improve his quality of life. And it helps, but he just sleeps and he's not himself 24 seven now. I have confronted them about it in a letter where I ask very politely that they please do something about the barking and even added that I do not intend to offend. I really just need my quality of life to improve again or else I'm going to have to move. They responded saying that the barking is not actually their dog. It is. I've stood outside their place to confirm this and have done nothing else to help. I'm at my wit's end. I just want to enjoy my apartment and my life, but this damn dog and the awful neighbor are making that impossible. Here's a story I recently wrote. My ongoing issues with my current neighbor are getting worse. But now it's getting warmer and I've tried opening the back windows and the little dog that lives in the back garden to the property has accumulated so much dog shit, it's stood on its own barking. Contacted Environmental Health, rang RSPCA, again, nobody has yet to be in contact. Even contacted the police now because the dog seems so distressed. The neighbor also left the property again for three days without anybody taking care of the dog. The neighbor is now charged with stalking. So from 2021, I had an issue with my young female next door neighbor. I lived alone. I'm 28 with my son. I'm female too. She never leaves her home, invites endless men to her property, throws parties every single weekend and abuses the property. I was told by counsel she was meant to be living there alone with her child, but this is not the case. The baby's dad lives there, and when he leaves, another different person rocks up. So I'll start from the beginning. Moved in April 2021, and she knocked on my door and asked me if I'd go on her property and check to see if her child was still breathing. To me, that was extremely weird, but she was 19 at the time and a young mom, and I've been there myself, so I did. Never spoke to the girl again, except hello in passing. I received messages from strangers saying I've slept with their partners. They sent screenshots of my next door neighbor stating this all over Facebook Messenger. Of course, I've instantly showed these messages to the next door neighbor who was speechless she'd been called out. Turned out she was sleeping with the woman's boyfriend. And I told her to never ever speak to me or about me ever again. From this day on, she's become fixated on me. She listens to my conversations with family and friends and weirdly tries to make the exact same conversation with her family members when they come. Whenever I am in the garden, she stands at the top window staring at me. She throws dog shit over the fence. Her whole garden is covered in dog shit as she bought three dogs and leaves them outside in the garden. I rang RSPCA as she left the property once for three days in a row and she came back kicking off and screaming down the street. She did eventually sell two of the animals. I believe she had no money for cigarettes so she sold them. One dog still remains. This dog stays in the garden and barks from 7 a.m. in the morning until 12.30 to 1 a.m. early hours of the morning. She stands on the front and opens empty rubbish bags on windy days so the rubbish flies into my garden. I've had a ring doorbell installed, which now forced the police to go from harassment to intentional harassment as she is always speaking about me even to herself and her three-year-old daughter, just saying, 
the slag next door, and she's got HIV. The most ridiculous allegations I've ever heard of. Since 2021, I've had no contact with this neighbor, but summer of 2023, I had to knock on her door because the noise from the parties were too loud. My son is in year four, and he was losing so much sleep, the school has mentioned it to me. So, I knocked at 11.30 p.m. and said, what time will this be ending, and explained it's every single weekday and weekend, to which I was attacked on my doorstep, punched by her and kicked by her brother. Assault charge. It's now 2024, and I have had to ring the police again, as she has been sharing videos she's taken of me in my private home to WhatsApp groups, etc. Just normal me living my day-to-day -day life, so I called the police. They've now stated it's stalking and will be taking the correct course of action. The police attended next door and explained, I've got hours of evidence and that she must stop with this behavior. The second they left, my ring doorbell picked her up again on the front, slagging me off and saying she's going to do this and that. I live a normal life. I work for a private doctor's office Monday to Friday, and my child goes to school every single day. I own a car which has been threatened to be damaged. A window has already been smashed with no proof as no video evidence was up at this time. Although a neighbor's caught it, the police still said, unfortunately, as the culprit was dark, they cannot say it's definitely that neighbor. She often is caught screaming down the phone to her ex or whatever partner it is saying she got no food to feed her daughter until he rocks up with some cigarettes and a bag of food and she's quiet until the next time. But you can imagine we barely used our gardens or have our windows open. After speaking to a few neighbors, it turns out neighbors across the road have also been in contact with the police due to harassment. They've had directly from her, too. Everyone seems to get on. It's a lovely estate, except this one house. I'm just wondering if anybody knows legally how much it's going to take now that the case has moved to stalking, and it's been ongoing since 2021 to get this girl removed. She doesn't work, so she sat at home 24-7. She knows I work from home, so she starts banging on the walls most days. Recorded evidence. Sometimes leaves her music on full blast whilst she disappears for a full day, and the dog's barking in the back. She's even gone as far as buying a new cat, a female cat, but locking it outside. She's not had it spayed, so... Everyone on the estate was kicking off on the group chat because this one cat was causing havoc with all the tomcats about. The cat lovers of the estate got in touch with the RSPCA, who removed the cat from the home as she didn't care for it, and she went out and bought three dogs for the garden. I do believe this last dog will be sold when she has no more money. I have had dirty nappies left on my door when opening my front door, which she finds hilarious on camera, and I have to remove the toxic, dirty-filled nappies. Has anybody experienced an obsession like this? It's like she's fixated on me in my life. Whenever my friends visit, she openly stands at her front door and just stares at them. If we go into the garden, she'll go into hers, where she never ever usually goes, due to the amount of dog shit, so it's clear she's just there to listen. Also, a neighbor from the back properties has stated when she looked out of her window in the summer and I was sunbathing, next door was set at the fence looking through a hole at me. It's making me feel so uneasy. Also, in regards to the amount of lies I've managed to gather evidence, is there no such law as slander? Will the police take this more serious now it's stalking and not just intentional harassment? Her child is almost four now, and she refers to her as the baby never heard her real name. 
and the abuse I've seen this child under is horrific. Of course, reported to SS, and they now attend weekly. Seems like before this appointment, her mom came around for a good four hours prior with all her cleaning products. They never seem to clean the garden, which shocks me, as the amount of shit is clearly a hazard for a small child. What? She prefers to let her child play out on the front where the main road is, rather than the back. It's such a peculiar situation. I am shocked people like this exist. I pray for the day that I can finally get away from this nightmare living next door to me. Hi. I have this neighbor who will open his door loudly as I am entering the hallway on our apartment floor. It happens on average a few times a week. The neighbors in our building don't really talk to each other, and it is rarely I will see anyone when I am in the building. The shutting of the door happens when I am by myself and the hall is deserted. I lied about not seeing anyone because I often see this guy. He goes in and out because he smokes weed throughout the day. I've been anxious the past few days because I think somebody has started smoking in the building, and because of that, I get faint whiffs of smoke. I was having trouble sleeping, and I smelled smoke, so I decided to get out of bed and get some fresh air, and maybe see if there was anybody outside smoking. I went outside and walked around the block. It was deserted. It was also 3 a.m. Just as I was entering, opening the door going into our hallway, I hear a door yanked open a few doors away where the weirdo neighbor lives. Nobody came out of their apartment building. I think they just tried to quietly close the door. I stood there and waited 10 seconds just to see what would happen, and nobody came out from the door. I am feeling nervous about the situation because the neighbor doesn't speak, and he displays weird behavior that other people have complained to me about. This dude has never confronted me, but he won't speak to me in public or even say hello, and seems like he's trying to be menacing towards me. I am tired of dealing with him, and I'm not sure what the next step I should take because it doesn't happen all the time. But he told me that somebody had a court order against him where he couldn't see his kid. So I know there is more to this situation. If there is any advice out there somebody had or has had a similar experience and could help shed some light on what's going on, that would be great. Thank you in advance. Yeah, so basically we moved into a new apartment the same time as this guy. At first he seemed nice and like he had a lot in common with my boyfriend and I. All of us being metalheads and stoners as well, as the same age. Things were okay for a few months until this neighbor, let's just call him Kyle, started doing things that made me deeply uncomfortable. So, I'm a trans person, female to male but I have lived as a man for multiple years and was on hormones long before I met Kyle. He didn't know I was trans until I told him, and almost as soon as he found out, he started accidentally misgendering me. This was strike one in our friendship. As well, he wouldn't stop making racist jokes and mocking Indian and Chinese accents by poorly imitating them. Even after I asked him to stop and told him I was uncomfortable. The final straw for me was when he started forgetting his key to the building. So he started knocking and opening our window from the outside to get me to let him in. In the middle of the fucking night. First three times it happened, I tried to be a good sport about it until he did it at like 1 a.m and caught me with my hand down my pants. Because I'm a fucking adult and should be able to jerk off in my own house. Thank you very much. 
I ended up screaming at him that I was done with his shit and didn't want to be friends because he never listened to me or respected my boundaries. Yeah, he started acting like a fucking weirdo after that. There was the usual glaring when he saw us type thing, but easy to ignore. He started parking outside our apartment windows, even though he has both paid parking at the apartment and ample room to park in front of his own damn window. Okay, whatever. Then he starts blaring his music until exactly the bylaw hours, loud enough to shake the walls. Again, okay, whatever. Except then he started smoking his dab rig inside. And I don't know if anyone else here takes dabs, but if you do, you probably know that very distinct cough that's actually more like a hack, wretch, and spit. At four in the fucking morning. So, after three days in a row of being woken up to hearing him almost puking up a lung, I wrote a note asking him to stop. Pick a different time to smoke, please, or take it out to your car. I did say that if he continued to disturb our sleep, I would send the recording I have of his coughing and the clouds of dab coming out of his window to the landlord or police. I really thought that was the fucking end of that, but apparently not. Two weeks later, my partner and I are walking our dog, and he starts jogging towards us, yelling to stay away from his car. We weren't near his car, so I pointed this out and said to leave us alone. We were walking our dog. He then said, I know you slashed my fucking tires, you tranny. At this point, I'm really getting fed up, and I will admit, I did chuckle when he told me. I told him, Aw, that sucks. You should try making less enemies in the neighborhood then. You assume it was me, but I literally don't care about you enough to slash your damn tires, Kyle. You don't get, I want you to leave me the fuck alone. And I will admit, after being called a slur to my face, I did start yelling back when I got to the end of my reply and telling him to leave me alone. He starts yelling at me to fuck around and find out. So I'm literally trying to back away from him and he tells me, I need to stop taking testosterone because it makes me too aggressive. At this point, I'm beyond fucking sick of his shit, and I tell him so in those words. I tell him I'm more than willing to call the cops, file a peace order if he doesn't leave. I'm sick of his fucking harassment. He got a camera and pointed out the window to get a wide angle of the street. Nothing I can do about it, but... I did flip him off every time I walked past. I also really want to know what he did to piss off another tenant in the building because I was walking past last week and noticed someone literally smearing shit on his doorknob. Slashing tires and putting shit on his door handles is way too nuclear for me to understand, unless he's done similar to other residents as well. I really hope he continues to leave us alone now. It's been very quiet since he got shit-bombed. <laughs> Amazon delivered our NFH packages to us in an ice storm. We left it on our front porch and called Amazon for re-delivery because we will not interact with this neighbor or step foot on her property. Also, we would not have any proof that this NFH wouldn't claim that we kept her package away. She is that kind of neighbor. After a 20-minute phone call, Amazon put in the driver order for pickup. They said pickup would be anywhere from five to seven days. But if the driver didn't come by, we could donate or discard. As the package said on my front porch, on day four, we received a visit from our local police department. The officer came out and said they had received a call from this NFH who stated that we were known to steal packages that aren't ours, which is completely and totally untrue. 
After speaking with the officer and laying out the backstory and reasons we do not interact with this person, the officer said he would tell the NFH that in the future, we would be going exactly what we did for, call for redelivery. He then took the package over to her. Today, I reached out to Amazon to let them know the driver would not need to stop by and found out the neighbor had received a refund. So, bottom line is that she has her item and full refund. She is also going around saying that we stole her package and smearing our family, even though it's set on our easily identifiable front porch for several days under our balcony awning. In the past, she has had no problem going onto our front porch for her Uber Eats, as seen on our Blink camera. What can we do to stop something crazy like this from happening ever again? We are already on record with Amazon and our local police department. So I live in an apartment and keep to myself, but I have one neighbor who keeps making complaints that she hears me and my boyfriend having sex. She made one complaint while I wasn't even there, but traveling for the holidays. It's gotten to the point that I'm sleeping on my own couch and making my boyfriend whisper when he is over. I told the apartment manager this, and they said I need to be able to live my life, and they'll be in touch. I've just never had this happen before and am mortified humiliated and don't know what my options are at this point. My neighbor isn't quiet. She has woken me up out of a dead sleep when I first moved in and regularly slept in the bedroom. By slamming dresser drawers shut, I've heard her TV and her grandkids talking. In that regard, I've also heard my neighbors on the other side blast music and have sex and heard them watching movies or practice violin. The walls are thin, and I just moved on because I know people are going to make sound. When my boyfriend and I do have sex, it's silent. Maybe some heavy breathing and often not in the bedroom at this point. When my apartment managers first let me know about the complaints, they suggested that my boyfriend and I have sex anywhere but the bedroom. And I'm just so lost as to what else I can do or what I should do. Can anyone help? Has anyone else been in this situation? I've also met that neighbor who was complaining, and she is older. She told me she's close to retiring. Have only ever been kind to her, even when I've seen her. So, any advice? Please help. All right, dear listeners, I wanted to insert this for a quick second. I've been in this situation where I had neighbors complaining that they could hear me have sex. I didn't do anything or tell the landlord. I just simply had sex louder. They eventually left me alone. <laughs> anyway, back to the stories. About a month ago, one of my neighbors in my apartment building scraped down the left side of my car, leaving the parking lot. There was no note left or anything, but I knew who it was because his car was the only one parked to my left and the only car gone when I got out to go to work. I left a note on his car later telling him to call me. He had damage to his car that I photographed as well. He claimed he didn't know when apologized, but when trying to go through his insurance, it turns out he didn't pay his annual fee on time, so it lapsed. Therefore, I had to go through my own insurance for $5,000 worth of damage. I suspected he had been drunk at the time based on his horrible, uneven parking and claiming to have not known. He did it, but had no proof. A couple weeks later, I watched him get out of his car and literally fall onto another lady's car. He struggled to get himself back up and was stumbling clear to his apartment. He hit her right mirror with his torso then pushed it back into place as well. He also always has those small black plastic bags you get from liquor stores when getting out of his car. Since the accident, he has avoided parking next to me, 
but when I went out to work this morning, he was parked to my left in a non-parking zone. With his front end turned so close to my car, I couldn't even get into the driver's side door. I had to climb across from the passenger side. I'm getting really tired of seeing this behavior and not saying anything. If I discuss this with the leasing office, are there any actions or warnings they can provide? He's a liability to everyone in our lot. I moved into a new built house about three years ago. A few weeks later, my neighbor moved into theirs and everything was fine, even when they got a new puppy and I was still fine when they got another puppy. So they had three dogs, and at the time, I said it was fine if the dogs were in my backyard, because we didn't have a fence between our properties. My rule was keep them off my porch, away from the grill, and away from my trash can. They didn't listen to any of that. Whatever. A year goes by. We get a fence, and they even paid for half of it. They put up chicken wire on the short fence they have next to the park. It's only two large horizontal beams. Great. But one of their dogs can jump it, and the chicken wire falls after a few months. These dogs are friendly, too friendly, and have no training of any kind. They get out and they jump on people. I was carrying my newborn while I was on a little walk to get him to sleep. Their dog gets out, runs halfway down the street to jump on me. The dog scratched my newborn baby. I was furious. I talked to the owners who gave me a half-hearted apology and quickly changed the subject. This has happened multiple times to me and other neighbors. Everyone hates their dogs. In the three years I've lived next to them, they have never completely cleaned their yard of all the dog shit. I've asked many times, and I only ask in the summer when I'll be outside too. I've always asked them multiple times to fix the chicken wire because their dogs keep getting out. When the neighbor had pavement put down in their backyard, the people they hired broke my gate. They blamed it on too much rain and the wood had expanded. No, if that was the case, our other gate would be off too, or other sections of our fence would have cracks too, but nothing was wrong. They broke my gate, and when I asked them to call the guys they hired to come fix it, they refused, insisting the people they hired were too good to make mistakes. The guys we hired to do our backyard and shared fence were too scared of them to even collect the payment from them and asked me to collect it for them if that tells you anything more about these guys. Again and again, these neighbors lie to my face when I ask for anything to be done. All this I tell you to give you context for this next part. In my city, there is a law that allows a household to own four pets of any various of either dogs, cats, pigs, and or rabbits. Today, they got a new puppy, four dogs, but they have two cats. One of the cats had spent a few nights on my porch because they forgot her. We live next to grasslands. I see hawks every day and hear owls at night. A few neighborhood cats have disappeared, being eaten by these birds. It is a very bad idea to let your cat out where I live. So that makes six pets in this home. Not that it matters, but they also have four young children at home. I won't care about their pets or their lives if I knew their dogs were trained and had a proper fence to keep them and the neighborhood safe. But alas, neither of these things are ever going to happen. And so when I welcome a new baby this summer and take my toddler outside to play in our own yard or at the park, this neighbor lives right next to you. I will not be worrying about their stupid dog attacks on us. No because I am reporting them to the city and the HOA for their dogs and for not having their yard installed when it was supposed to be done nine months after moving in.
My neighbor moved in two and a half years ago. As soon as he moved into the building, garbage in the hallways, like broken beer bottles, garbage falling to our balcony, mostly cigarette butts, pigeon infestation was homing them on his windowsill because he thought they were cute. Music all day. My partner and I work from home 50% of the time. Everyone in the building dislikes him. Most here are convinced he is a drug dealer because of the people he has hanging around. He claims to be a musician. He does a lot with auto-tune. But I have snooped and know he works at a call center when it suits him. Yes, it does seem like he is dealing, considering the people we all are forced to encounter. They can't pinpoint his transgressions as easily as us because he is above us. We were very empathetic in the beginning, personally talking to him. We had the cops called on us at his age. I work with musicians. We learn from our fuck-ups. But he tries for like two weeks, then back to shit. All this to say we successfully got him evicted because he is actual trash. His fuck buddy just rang our doorbell at 12.30 tonight, Thursday before work. This is the second time my partner explained to her previously the correct doorbell. She rang our doorbell because his label is faded. I screamed at her through the door and told her to figure her shit out. Rang his doorbell, told him to take care of his girl. He came down five minutes later, attempting to yell at me for disrespecting her because I didn't let her in. I don't know what to do for, potentially, two more months of this shit, other than therapy. Any functional advice? Call the cops? I don't know. Continue with intimidation? Okay, I am definitely moving. I have had it. Fuck these assholes. I hate these shit stains with the passion of a thousand sons. They are running a car or engine fixing business out of their yard. Engines revving all day. One of the idiots always coming and going on his loud ass motorcycle. Tons of cars parked in their driveway. Tons of strangers over there. Lots of door slamming and pounding, hammering noises. Plus, their yard is a nasty, ugly junk heap. They also excessively burn shit in their backyard. Many times, there is ash raining down like a goddamn volcano went off. The thick smoke is often visible. I always have to smell it, and it, of course, further ruins being outside. Then, there is their stupid gun shooting, which is right next to my property. No words can describe my hatred for it. I only own a gun for self-defense, not to use loud noise as a form of territorial pissing. They have run me out of my bedroom because, sadly, the primary bedroom is on that side of the house. Now I have to be in the ugly tiny room that is furthest away from them. Still hear stuff, though. I work third shift some, so I sleep during the day often. I had three electro-fan white noise machines in that bedroom. I have them in every room. These are decibels. White noise cannot drown out, although it is highly effective against dog barking. We boarded up the bedroom and bathroom window and put in rock wool installation. Still, we can hear these fuckers next door. We even put up a privacy fence to block them, too. I have not tried calling any authorities because this is the county and I honestly believe it is futile. There are no strong ordinances. Maybe at best I could get the excessive burning because it's a fire hazard for my own yard. But open burning is just a thing in the county I am now believing. Same with the gun shooting. We have not spoken to them because, again, it's futile. Plus, they got into that creepy, no trespassing type weirdo vibe. I really don't like this house enough to fight this and have no money for a legal battle. For the record, when this house was bought, 
I was peeking through the strip of trees to see their property, and there was no red flags. This started after we moved in and because of their asshole sons who live there now. Fuck me, I guess, for assuming a little over one acre would be nice. It's the rectangle-shaped land that ruins it. County is apparently only okay if you have five-plus acres. I am miserable and crying daily. I turn on a loud shop back just to go outside and not hear them. I have so desperately wanted a peaceful place to live and garden and have quiet hobbies. I hated these people so much because of this. It's excessive and maddening noise. I am never moving to the county again unless it is a more closer quarters neighborhood where people have to keep neat yards so obviously there would be no working on cars or gun shooting. I fucking hate these neighbors. They just finally helped me answer my last lingering doubt. I'm moving ASAP. Just bidding time for now. Before I begin, I would like to apologize if this story is too long, but I must tell it. I've been living in my complex for about five and a half years now. I live in a bottom unit because I have a large dog and I know I'm a heavy walker. I am aware of myself and I always request bottom units for a reason. My husband and I keep to ourselves, never had any issues with neighbors, and are on friendly terms with the property maintenance workers. Now, I'm not unreasonable. I understand that apartment living comes with noises and such. When I first moved in here, there were a couple who lived above me. Nice people. Never knew them or heard them, besides normal apartment noises. Perfect neighbors. Second set of neighbors were a couple with a toddler and a dog, who lived here for a couple of years. Same as above, except the dad would occasionally throw his video game controller on the floor while rage quitting, which my husband and I found hilarious. It was never often enough for it to be a problem, and always during daytime. Around four months ago, a new set of neighbors moved in. It was a family. A mom, two older teenage boys, and three younger kids. I've never completely counted them. During their move-in, I was on vacation, and my mom, who was dog-sitting, let me know that they were very loud. I just shrugged it off as moving noises. My God, how wrong was I? To start it off, let's talk about the noise. Imagine many elephants running back and forth before suplexing each other. That's exactly how loud the running and banging noises sound. Morning to night, sometimes past midnight, I would also hear the kids screaming and crying and heard her spank them at times, followed by screeches. The first couple of months, I let it go, and by the third time, I personally went up there and spoke with the mother. The mom introduced herself to me and told me she recently came from Honduras and that they don't speak English very well. I speak Spanish, and as a child of an immigrant, it made me a bit more sympathetic towards her, and I gently told her that I could hear the kids running around and that I understood that kids deserved to play, but that it was becoming a nuisance. She apologized, and it stopped for about a week. A week later, it sounded like bowling balls were dropping repeatedly at 2 a.m. It woke me up. I was pretty pissed off, and I knocked on their door. One of the smaller children opened the door, and I asked to speak with the mom. In the background, they were slamming a soccer ball back and forth. The TV was at full volume. When the mom came to the door after a couple of minutes, one of the younger kids came to the door beside her, completely nude, crying to her about showering. Ugh. Around the same time, I began to find trash, cigarette butts, blunt wrappers, toys, and clothing on my balcony that did not belong to me or my husband. Once again, I let her know that this was happening, and it lessened. The trash and toys stopped appearing, 
but the cigarette butts and blunt wrappers prevailed. One time, I heard the older teenager smoking a blunt, choke on it, and proceeded to cough up the nastiest loogie and spit it onto my balcony. What tipped my scale was the fact that my husband and I noticed a strange urine smell coming from the bedroom window door whenever we opened it. There are longer plants in that area, and after some investigating, we found out that they were water bottles filled with urine being discarded there. Just absolutely disgusting. That same night, the kids started throwing themselves on the floor at around 11 p.m., and I was fuming. I was raised in apartments, too, and I was taught to be respectful, shut up, and sit down after a certain time. I had accumulated a month's worth of evidence and sent it in a long, angry email to the property management, as well as asking them to come pick up the water bottles with urine. I was apologized to and sent an email saying that they were going to take necessary measures. Unfortunately, I live in a very tenant-friendly state, and since this was my first incident of reporting, they were limited to what they could do, aka just a warning phone call before a lease violation. But that further instances would escalate the issues. I was also advised to call security for any further noise complaints. I shot myself in the foot by not reporting the first incident to the office. The water bottles filled with piss weren't picked up for another week, but the office agent was disgusted at the fact that he had fished out 10 to 15 water bottles filled with urine. This was a month and a half ago, and I have had to call security three times due to excessive stomping and banging, twice in one week. The cigarette butts are no longer thrown onto my balcony, but over my balcony and into my immediate sidewalk. The mom just doesn't give a fuck about what her kids are doing, and I don't think she realizes how trashy everyone's behavior is. At this, I asked the property management to resolve this. I'm hot-headed, so I forwarded the videos of the stomping, the screaming, the trash on my balcony, and the piss-filled water bottles to the regional property manager and to the president. At this, my direct property management reached out and told me that this was a difficult case, but that I could move units, and everything, including my deposit and appliances, could be transferred with me. I'm actually happy with this because I get a fresh apartment with new carpet, and best of all, I no longer have to deal with her and her tap-dancing children. Counting down to mid-February, when the new unit will be ready to move in, and she officially becomes management's problem, and no longer mine. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true crazy neighbors from hell stories. I'd like to take a moment to give a very special shout out to the reformed members of the channel. Mrs. Innerscare, Tina Mee, Colt Stone Wolf, Luz Crispin, Tammy Slayton, CAG, Denise Seth, Samantha Play, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, Norma DW, Chrissy Elias, Cindy Cleveland, and Patty's niece. Thank each of you for your continued support. I appreciate you all. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. In the meantime, please take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.